Hi guys, okay, welcome to the first in a mini series of the consultation videos designed to go over each different skin type. So what we're gonna do today is go over skin types of sensitivity and rosacea. This will also include people that have problems with psoriasis and problems with eczema. So without further ado, let's get on. There are two ways mainly that you would have sensitive skin. One is a normal sensitive skin where you might be sensitive to products. You might be touch sensitive. When you touch your skin, it might feel a little bit irritated. Your skin feels quite uncomfortable and you may be heat sensitive. All of these fit into a normal type of sensitive skin. You also have sensitive skin issues where there are skin conditions. These are eczema, psoriasis, rosacea and other dermatitis type conditions. Generally they are very sore, they can be quite bumpy with acne underneath the skin, they can also be very flaky, very hot and very itchy. And all of these different types of sensitive skin need to be treated differently. So, there are many reasons why a skin can become sensitive. You may feel that you've been sensitive for an awful long time. You may have only just had a sensitivity. That might be to a product that you've tried and it's aggravated your skin in some way. Um, also, if you have more of a condition, you might be subject to Demodex. So Demodex is a mite that lives on the surface of the skin and people with rosacea, it's been known through a scientific study at a university that the rosacea on the surface of the skin is because the protective barrier function has been compromised by the Demodex, which live on the surface of the skin, um, when they die, they actually almost explode, spilling out their contents. This is what causes the irritation across the cheeks, across the nose, and in some cases across the whole face. So it's also looking at bacteria and how you can combat that on the skin. So other reasons of being sensitive, you might have gone through a particular trauma that can cause sensitivity in the skin. So there's absolutely plenty of reasons why. Um, what we're trying to do is break it down a little bit more and try and combat that for you. Um, like I've said before, it, you don't need a list as long as your arm in order to do this. Less is more and let's keep it simple. So I will be going over different options. The point being that you would fit or choose something that fits you. You don't need to have every single thing in the list. So um, at the end, if you can watch through right to the end of the video, I'll explain a little bit more. Um, with my recommendations at the end and you'll make sense of it a little bit more. Okay, so let's move on Okay, so what are you doing at home with your skin? There's three different areas that I'd like to cover with this and hopefully together we can get some answers for you for your sensitive skin Okay, so how much water do you drink? I can't stress enough how important water consumption is for your skin, also for your internal organs, for your bones, for your muscles and for your general health. For skin, it is also really important. You lose approximately two and a half litres of water every single day. This is through your skin, your gallbladder and your kidneys mostly. So the idea is if you replace two litres of water with water and then you can enjoy half a litre of whatever it is that you enjoy. Try and keep coffee and tea to a minimum. I personally really enjoy a coffee, but I try to reward myself with a coffee when I've had at least two litres of water. 
So think about how much water that you are drinking and find ways where you can actually drink more. A lot of people who are not used to drinking water do find it difficult. It is a bit of an acquired taste to get used to, but find different ways where you can enjoy water maybe cut up some citrus fruits lemon lime orange cut them into slices put them in the freezer and then once you have some water put a slice in the bottom of it and it's just going to give your water a nice citrusy flavor so that you can enjoy it a bit more i personally like hot water just out of a kettle it's a you know a little not too boiling because it's a little bit too hot, but I find that I can drink more of it that way. It's almost like drinking a cup of tea. So you need to find a way that works for you so that you can manage at least two and a half litres a day and that will help your skin. Okay, let's talk about supplements. Are you taking supplements? If not, why not? Everybody should take supplements. Your skin is your largest organ of your body and it can only get the nutrition that it needs through supplementation. You would have to physically eat a thousand calories extra a day in order for the nutrition that you're eating to get to your skin. So obviously nobody wants to do that. So supplementation is really important. Also, if you consider, if you have a skin problem, there is a reason that you have a skin problem. If your skin cells was were getting the nutrition that they needed and everything that they needed to repair themselves, you wouldn't have a skin problem in most cases. So just something for you to think about. We will go in depth into supplements. Firstly, multivitamin and mineral. As a base, everybody should have a multivitamin and mineral. This is going to cover all the essential B vitamins and iron and zinc and copper um, that you need for skin function. So it's really important to take a multivitamin and mineral. On top of that, for sensitive skin, the ideal thing for you to take would be omegas. Omegas bubble wrap your skin cells. If you find that you are drinking a lot of water but it actually isn't helping your skin, the likelihood is is because you need to have the omegas for the skin to hold on to the water. So think of it like bubble wrapping. You'll then be able to hold on to it and you've also got the essential omegas within the skin that will help to repair the cells and help get rid of the dryness, the itchiness and build the structure and strength back into the skin that you desperately need. So omegas is really important. Generally you can actually self prescribe your omegas. For most people one a day is absolutely fine and one a day of an amount of about a thousand to 1100 international units is absolutely fine for normal skin. If you're, sens if you're sensitive, your skin is not normal at this time, so you need to take more. If your skin has psoriasis or eczema, which are dry skin conditions, then you need even more. So it would be my advice generally to have a look and self-prescribe. If you came into the salon, we would have a look at how severe your dry skin condition is and take it from there. Most people start off with two skin omegas but some do start off with four. You cannot overdose with these, you'd have to have a pot a day so you don't need to worry about that. If you have any questions obviously please put them in the comments below and I can um, we can do a consultation to go over it with you but that's skin omegas. There's also Skin Vit C. Skin Vit C is really essential for sensitive skin. It helps to eliminate broken capillaries within the skin. It has rosehip in there, which is very healing, and vitamin C. Vitamin C is very key for repair and for collagen production to build up the strength and the structure back in the skin. Okay, sorry about that. I just needed a little breather and to get the next bit of information for you. So next we're going to look at the Skin Youth Biome. Skin Youth Biome is concerned with treating the gut with probiotics. So it's a well-known fact that if your gut flora 
and your system isn't working properly, this shows up on your skin and can result in a lot of skin problems. So treating the gut is really, really important. So the Skin Youth Biome with the probiotics is not only going to help you internally, but it's also going to help you externally on your skin. Especially when, if we go back to rosacea skin, I mentioned the Demodex. Demodex release bacteria onto the skin so the probiotics is going to help as a barrier to minimize that so i would really recommend the um, supplements for rosacea skin um, that with the omegas and with the skin fit c all three of those items together in salon have seen outstanding results in actually clearing up rosacea getting rid of the soreness the itchiness and the redness to calm down it is a journey it's not going to happen overnight it's going to be months of you know investment in yourself but you would definitely get there and it is really worth it so that's my little advice for sensitivity on internal supplementation nutrition okay on to the next bit okay so here you have skin vitality one which is a broad spectrum of vitamins and minerals for everyday health. Taking a multivitamin also supports all the other supplements that you choose to take. So your body can absorb the other supplements that you would choose to take, whether that's turmeric, garlic, omegas, whatever it is. Taking a vitamin and mineral supports that process because your body can process the extra vitamins, supplements, whatever it is that you're giving yourself, an awful lot better when you're taking a vitamin and mineral. With Skin Vitality One, you only need to take one a day and you get 60 capsules, which is two months worth. Then you have the Skin Omegas Plus. Plus meaning that you've got the added benefit of vitamin A in there, which is absolutely key for repair. Vitamin A repairs damaged DNA so to have that in there is the added bonus which will help repair skin but also the omegas helping any dry skin conditions so here we have the skin bit C this leaves your skin light and bright and supports your normal blood vessels and capillaries. This then in turn gives you a more even complexion, helps to break down the pinkness of the skin because you're supporting the blood vessels. This also helps the cells from oxidative stress and helps the immune system. Then you have the Skin Youth Biome. As we've said previously, this is your probiotics for your gut, which then in turn helps the surface of your skin. In here, you have five different strains of probiotics and within each capsule, you have over five million. So it's much more advanced and is specific for skin health than other probiotics. Absolute key for rosacea skin types. Okay, let's have a look at what you're doing topically to your skin. Do you have a routine? Are you able to cleanse, tone and moisturise or perhaps wear serums and things like that? Or can you just not tolerate anything at all and all you're doing is water? So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Some people with sensitive skin will say they only do water. And while water isn't going to hurt your skin, it certainly isn't helping your skin at all. If you're only using water because your skin cannot tolerate anything at all topically on it, then continue to do that, but go back and look at internally, build your strength and your skin integrity by doing the nutrition internally first. Once you have this in your system for a few weeks, you'll then be able to start patch testing on basic products that you can then help your skin topically. So go ahead and do that first. Perhaps you are able to cleanse and you moisturize but you don't tone a lot of people that do this process miss out toners for two reasons one because they believe it takes too long and two because they've stung their face in the past now generally if you found that a toner has irritated your skin it's because it's probably had alcohol within it and most skin types don't tolerate this anyway 
and obviously I can understand that people would be fearful of, of then going in and using a toner. But a toner is actually really important within your regime to balance the pH of the skin. And as we've seen before in other previous videos, it takes seconds. So there's no reason really um, that we should be missing this out only unless your skin doesn't tolerate a decent toner, which we'll go through shortly. Do you have um, an over routine where you're just completely over processing the skin? With sensitive skin, sometimes the skin just has no idea what it's doing because you're literally throwing too much at it. So really look at what you're doing and how necessary it is. If you've got a routine where you have loads of products in it but your skin is still aggravated, then strip it right back and go back to basics. Simple, cleanse, tone, moisturize nothing else if you're finding that you're doing those steps and you still get a bit of irritation then let's look at the products that you're using there's a difference between high street and salon products um, with high street there is a ceiling point of activity which is 16 percent even though that ceiling point is in there that doesn't actually always necessarily mean that that's what you've got also when brand marketing is concerned sometimes simple just isn't simple and there's still aggravated ingredients within some of the simpler brands that is unnecessary that some sensitive skins just do not tolerate so again let's look at what you've got and try and find ways of improving what you've got um, again go back to nutrition maybe you know just for a minute build up a bit of strength from the inside and then try your products again if you find that those products still are not being tolerated with the skin then it's time to switch up and try something a little bit better also I appreciate budget is a huge thing where people miss out products um, completely understand that but actually I'll explain in a little while how actually we can target certain products that you can just pop into your routine to give a bit of a boost and then when you've actually run out of one of your other products you can just replace it with something better later on so you don't have to have all singing and dancing straight away nobody really has got the budget to just buy a whole range of skincare products let's work through it you know that works well for you so that you get the results that you would like to achieve Again, sorry, just get the next bit of information for you. Okay, the next point is, do you wear makeup as well? Um, we have lots of daily um, aggressions on the skin anyway, but also where products are concerned, there's an awful lot of chemicals in certain products. So if your skin is quite sensitive, look at the makeup that you're wearing. Does it contain a lot of chemicals? Or is it a nice you know, um, mineral band that is actually looking after your skin? So if your skin is really intolerant, really go back and have a look at how much makeup you're using and actually is it a good makeup brand? Again, brand marketing out there will tell you that a lot of them are good out there with uh, my experience a mineral makeup is much better for all skin types i personally choose to wear that because i know i'm not putting extra chemicals on my skin and i can tolerate that um, i can't wear mascaras on the high street because i can feel the fumes on my eyes whereas i can wear a mineral mascara no problem at all so there's that to consider also some brands that do stipulate that they are mineral aren't always mineral either not not a full mineral so for instance um, I don't know if this is still current but they're at one point L'Oreal just to sort of name them out um, they had a mineral brand of makeup and if you look on the back of the packet it says may contain titanium dioxide now titanium dioxide is the main ingredient in a mineral makeup and if it may contain it means it's not necessarily going to be in there um, the way they get away with that is it probably has talc in it. Talc is a mineral, but it's a mineral that blocks the skin and causes skin problems. So you don't really want to be putting that on your skin either. So education really is the key here and trying to be aware of exactly what you're putting on your skin and in yourself is really key. So let's look at this a little bit further in the next few slides. Okay. Here are my recommendations for cleansing the skin with sensitivity. First of all, we have for sensitive skin, 
we have the Essential Makeup Remover Milk by Jermaine De Cappuccini. This is a really gentle cleanser. It's one that I personally use every day and is our top seller. Most clients enjoy this, but it's also suitable for delicate skin. It is made mainly from flower extracts. Um, they are the most active ingredients that within there with porcelain flower and global daisy extract. So it really helps to protect the skin and soothe and rejuvenate the skin. This would be recommended if your skin, I keep saying normal sensitivity, obviously sensitive skin isn't normal skin, but it isn't overly aggressed or you have a condition. So if you're just a bit sensitive, not sure where to go with your products, but want something that's gentle but effective, then this would be right for you. The other product we have I've titled for oversensitive skin. This would be for people that are going through radiotherapy, chemotherapy, can tolerate no products on their skin whatsoever, or um, have other conditions like psoriasis, eczema. This would be a cleanser for you. It's actually a cleanser and a toner in one. So you don't need to do the toning process whether you have this, as we've said before, less is more so this is a micellar water gel which cleanses and soothes the skin it removes makeup from the face and eyes and a hundred percent of people that have used it have described that the sensation of itchiness and burning sensation is completely eliminated in the salon i've had quite a few people with rosacea use this product and every one of them has described that their skin has been much better after it so this would be my recommendation for you next let's have a look at toning your skin so for sensitive skin we have here the essential toning lotion this matches the cleanser that we've already described and that we've already recommended for sensitive skin it's packed full of hyaluronic acid and has the porcelain flower extract and the global daisy extract in there as well and is very good for dry skin but also very good for delicate skin this would be my recommendation for sensitive skin you do not need to use cotton wool when you're toning for two reasons one you're going to waste your toner in the cotton wool um, and you know that's just unnecessary and two cotton wool is very aggressive on the skin it's going to give you more irritation if you're using it so the way you would use your toner is you would put about a 20 pence piece size in the palm of your hand push your hands together to so distribute it on both hands and then press into the face literally takes you seconds that's all you need to do with a toner as we can see for the oversensitive skin at the moment, no toning for now. So if you're doing internal nutrition and you're using the micellar water at the moment, that's all you need to be doing. Next, we'll move on to the next step. Next, let's have a look at serums or facial oils. Now, this is an optional step when you've got skin sensitivity and only go to this step if you feel that your skin will tolerate these items. So first of all, we have for sensitive skin, um, the award winning rosehip oil. This is Jermaine de Cappuccini's most top seller out of everything that they sell. And for me, I know exactly why it's a fantastic product that everybody should have in their regime to be honest with you is absolutely packed full of vitamin a and other skin loving ingredients vitamin a is really key in repair so you're helping to repair the your damaged skin from the outside as well as doing it inside with your nutrition so vitamin a is known to repair damaged dna and will repair any skin type so even if your skin is sensitive because you have acne skin then this is a really good treatment for you. If you have sensitive skin, but you're slightly oily, then perhaps use this serum or this facial oil at night time, because then you'll feel that your skin isn't oily. It doesn't create oiliness and it's more of a dry oil anyway, um, but some people choose to use it at night time rather in the day. It makes them just feel a bit more comfortable. So I would recommend that. It's very beneficial for dry skin, dehydrated skin and stressed skin. So if you fit into those boxes, then the rosehip oil is definitely for you. If you're oversensitive and you have um, 
a skin condition, then the Be Calm SOS intensive care would be more suited to you. It's an emergency treatment serum that soothes and reduces skin sensitivity and irritation, particularly with rosaceous skins. Um, it's really beneficial. Again, the test in the salon, I've had people use this and it's been very beneficial. They've had really good results with it. Once your skin can then tolerate anything else, you could then move up to the rosehip oil or indeed include it in your routine later when you start your moisturising process. Okay, let's look at moisturising your skin now. Here for sensitive skin, we have the So Delicate range. The So Delicate range is a hypoallergenic range and contains a blend of natural plant extracts. Within that, you have rosemary, tea, licorice, chamomile and arnica, which all soothe and calm the skin. They also contain corn oil, which has a desensitising effect in it. Most people with sensitive skin get on really well with this moisturiser. I've actually had people that are going through radiotherapy who have been expected their skin to break, which is a term given to them from their oncologist, where the skin is really affected that it starts to really peel off in different places near the site of radiation. However, when they've used the So Delicate range, the skin hasn't broken at all. Often the oncologist has remarked on how has that happened because it's never seen. So it's a fantastic natural cream that is tolerated by most people. So this is a really good one to have for any sensitive skin type. There are two different types. You have So Delicate Rich, which is seen in the picture here, which is more for dry skin. There's also Tolerance Care, which is more normal skin. On the other side of the slide, we have for oversensitive skin. This is another product from the Be Calm range. The Be Calm range is a range of dermocosmetics, which are all hypoallergenic, but they've all had clinical studies to deliver what they actually say they will deliver. So they have an exclusive skin biome repair formula which helps to rebalance the skin flora. So it's particularly good for those with rosacea. This is an anti-inflammatory cream which contains green pigments. So it really helps to reduce the appearance of redness and it has a calm expert complex to reduce the sensitivity and irritation. It's also an SPF of 20, which is really important for all skin types, particularly sensitive skin. You must use an SPF. So you can use either um, of these products. They're suitable on either sensitive or oversensitive skin, either either, but you do need an SPF. So if you particularly suffer with rosacea, go for the oversensitive skin. If you have other skin conditions or what I keep calling a normal sensitive skin, then go for the tolerance care or the tolerance rich. Okay. Okay. So your last step in your topical application would be your finish. Now, generally, this would be for people a makeup application. However, most importantly, it is more your SPF protection. With sensitive skin, not a lot of people can tolerate a specific facial SPF because they're quite rich. They also have ingredients for anti-aging purposes. So when you have sensitive skin, my advice would be go for the mineral makeup. Jane Ardell mineral makeup, as you can see in the picture, have a few different bases that will suit different skins from the coverage that you feel that you would like to have. So very light coverage to very full coverage within those. And most of them contain an SPF naturally of 20. Now it's not an added ingredient in there because it's a mineral base, it's the mineral that gives the protection. So it's chemical free but gives you the protection that you'd like and add an, as, as an added bonus a complexion that you're also happy with too because it evens out your skin tone. So that would be my recommendation for that. Okay. 
So now just a few other things for you to think about when you need to consider things that you can look at and change perhaps with your sensitive skin. So stress is a big factor for any sensitivity so look at ways that you can minimize that. Obviously that's it's people are really stressful at the moment and um, whether it's work, the current situation, um, home, we're all together um, and bef even before all of this you know there's an awful lot of stress out there but try and find ways to manage your stress a little better. This will actually help your skin. Also look at your sleep pattern. Are you sleeping enough? If not there's some really good apps that you can get out there with um, meditation, maybe little things that you can just listen to while you go to sleep or you know just find things that you can do whether it's have a nice hot bath and um, some lovely products in there just to help to ease your stresses and help you feel a bit more comfortable so that you can have a nice restful sleep this will really help your skin also sun exposure are you getting enough sun exposure I know obviously we all harp on on you know staying out of the sun but we still do need vitamin D, we still need to have that and it helps to bring stress levels down. So, you know, find time where you can have half an hour, maybe even 10 minutes just in the garden, enjoying a little bit of sunshine, maybe with a cup of tea, um, just to help your stress levels, this will help your skin. And also, when you're back at work, if that's you know part of your lifestyle look at your office pollution whether it's lighting whether it's the laser printers you know this is all going to have an effect on your skin if you do work in an office my advice would be when you get home just cleanse your skin get rid of all of those pollutants um, and then that will help your skin also okay then we'll just pop on to the next step Okay then, so that's a whole heap of information that I've just given you and loads to consider but obviously it's all within the video so you can re-watch this at any point and go back to any point that you need to to get the information that you need. So let's just do a little recap of everything that we've said so far. So first of all, we need to feed our skin within with the nutrition and nutritional supplements to help build strength and integrity back into the skin and get your systems working properly uh, and then there's the skin obviously which is your largest organ the nutrition that it needs so that's feed then we're going to fortify fortify with topical creams and treatment products that will also help your skin from on the outside so you've got this two-pronged attack you're tackling your skin from the inside and you're also tackling your skin from the outside then you have your finish your finish is your SPF most important really important obviously because of you know UVA and UVB re B rays I beg your pardon um, your skin being sensitive you need to make sure that that is that box is ticked also so obviously that's also with makeup um, if you want a nice complexion um, feel a little bit better without having heavy makeup then obviously the minerals is a much better choice there so we have feed nutrition fortify topically with creams finish which is your makeup your SPF then we also have um, there we go sorry forgot um so finally then look at improvements that you can make within your lifestyle that will help you it doesn't have to be massive changes little changes make sometimes the biggest difference so but there's lots of areas that you can have a look at that you know that perhaps you can tailor to suit you and to suit your needs then for future when everything is back to normal whoever knows what back to normal is going to look like but then for the future do consider your in salon treatments really good idea to boost all your efforts that you're doing at home and you'll get better results most salon treatments that you have when you go to the salon particularly with us well with me the treatments that I can provide for you are more concentrated than what you're doing at home so it's a real boost and also together then we can bring in different technologies like LED that will really help your skin on a deeper level again to boost all the efforts that you're doing at home so we have feed fortify finish finally look at um, lifestyle and then future 
is salon treatments so thank you so much for watching i hope this has given you enough information that you can use to tailor your skin at home it's so difficult with everybody at the moment not being able to get to their appointments so i just thought i'd bring consultations to you it's a very difficult thing for me to be able to put all the information across to you on a one-way conversation so hopefully i've managed to tick a few boxes for you give you some food for thought that you can use to tailor anything that's right for you so at all if you need any further help or assistance please feel free to message in the comment you know in the section down below we can have a one-to-one -one, um, conversation where I can tailor it a little bit further because having your side of the conversation is obviously really important. But for now, I hope that's really helped you. There will be some more videos because there's all different sorts of skin types that we need to go over. So for now, thank you so much. Take good care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.